In this video, we are going to discuss the indicators that are used to judge the solvency position of the business. The solvency position refers to the long term financial position of the business and we want to judge the ability of the business to pay its long term dues. What are the long term dues really? The long term dues refer to the non-current liabilities. These are the bank loans or the debentures or bonds that you have uh, you know, in the balance sheet. So there are again three indicators uh, which help us understand the solvency position of the business. Let's look at uh, these indicators one by one. The first indicator is called debt to equity ratio. And this indicator can be calculated by dividing the external liabilities of the business by internal liabilities. Now debt is the external and equity is the internal. The only uh, you know, catch here is that external liabilities will include both the non-current liabilities plus the current liabilities because both are external liabilities, current liabilities. And we divide this by internal liabilities which are essentially the capital of the shareholders plus any reserves and surpluses. As discussed earlier, the reserves and surpluses also belong to the uh, shareholders. So the internal liabilities are the liabilities of the business towards the owners of the business, towards the shareholders of the business. And those uh, liabilities include the share capital, the reserve and surpluses. Share capital can be of two types. There can be equity shares and there can be preference shares. And I'll explain these two terms uh, as well. Uh, the equity shares are also called the common shares. Uh, the preference shares on the other hand are you know they enjoy some they have some preferential rights they have preferential rights in the sense that there is a fixed dividend that they get the dividend is the return the part of profit which is distributed to the shareholders the preference shareholders have a fixed uh, dividend you know say 10 percent on the other hand, equity shareholders, the common shareholders have no fixed dividend. Hence, the preferential right to the preference shareholders. Uh, also, the preference shareholders have a right to first payment in case of uh, you know, liquidity, uh, liquidation uh, of the business. If the business is coming to an end or there is an investment which is coming in, preference shares have the first right to be paid before the equity shareholders so therefore the name which is preference shares so essentially both the categories represent the share capital uh, the only thing is there are some preferential rights given to some shareholders and hence those are called preference shareholders all right so you are now aware of one more uh, one new term the other terms are uh, fairly you know you, you should be familiar with those so uh, using uh, these these terms you can calculate a debt to equity ratio what this ratio tells you is uh, how much money has been brought in by the owners of the business and how much money has been borrowed from the other parties in the long run uh, whatever has been borrowed from the other parties will need to be repaid uh, so you have to ensure uh, that there is a balance between what you bring in as an owner and what the outside parties have brought in. More importantly, when you go to outside parties, for example, you go to bank to raise a loan, they will also look at this ratio. Uh, if you are into a business or if you have ever approached a bank for, for a loan, you would know that the bank asks you to prepare a project report. Tell us how much money will you make? How will you be able to pay off the loan? How much money are you investing on your own? And how much money do you want us to invest? So uh, imagine, uh, you know, you go to a bank and you say, I'm going to uh, put in 50 and why don't you also put in 50 from your side, which means a ratio of one is to one. Uh, imagining that no other current liabilities exist. 
So bank would say, all right, you want me to put in uh, equal money, but risk is too much. So I will not do 50-50. What I would rather want is that you invest 80 and I will invest uh, the 20. So, you know, likewise, this negotiation could take place. So all I'm trying to indicate is debt to equity ratio is a very important ratio, not only to be utilized by management internally, but also by the external parties uh, when you're trying to increase your external funding, trying to raise more uh, debt funding. So uh, the debt funding, debt re uh, essentially refers to the loans uh, taken by the company. So in this case, we are looking at the external liabilities divided by the internal liabilities to see what is the balance between the two. What is the ideal ratio? What is a thumb rule? Go to the industry average. Whichever sector you are working in, there are numbers available on various platforms uh, where you could look and say this, these are the average numbers in the industry or top five competitors in the industry have this much external to internal liabilities ratio. All right, uh, so this is the first indicator which helps us understand the long-term solvency position of the business. Let's go to the second uh, indicator, which is called proprietary ratio. What is proprietary ratio? The word proprietor is typically used to refer to the owner of a business, proprietor. The proprietary ratio, therefore, would help us understand what is the percentage contribution of the owners of the business in the business what is the total investment in the business and what is the contribution of the owners that is what this ratio is going to tell us so the contribution of owners essentially uh, is equal to the capital that they have shareholders capital and you add to it any other reserves and surpluses all the extra money which has been put into you know short term and long term reserves this is what is the contribution of the shareholders. You divide this by the total liabilities, which essentially means all the funds, internal and external funds in the business, and you have a proprietary ratio. So total liabilities will include non-current and current plus the uh, shareholders capital as well. So this will include shareholders funds. So by the way, this term is called share holders funds so shareholders fund plus non current liabilities plus current liabilities practically the total on the balance sheet uh, on any side essentially because total liabilities are equal to total assets so this tells you the percentage total liabilities or total assets so you know that x percent 50 percent of the money is contributed by the shareholders of the business all right, let's look at one more ratio, which is called interest coverage ratio. Uh, again, this is very useful ratio in gauging the ability of the business to service the debt. Now, let me explain this. When you take a debt, debt refers to a loan. You will have to service the debt. Service the debt. Uh, an analogy of this is you purchase a car and now you have to get the car serviced every few months, every few kilometers. So servicing the debt here means that you've taken the loan and you have to pay the interest amount on it. So you have to pay interest regularly. The service here refers to the ability of the business to pay the interest regularly. So we are clearly interested in the interest amount on the loan. So interest on let's say all the loans that are there in the business. And when we talk about the ability of business to pay off these loans, what are we talking about? We are talking about uh, the uh, money which is available, the cash which is available uh, in the business to pay the interest. So the question is how much cash is available in the business? So what we need to do is to look at the income statement because this is an expense. The finance cost is an expense. And if you remember the format of the income statement, you have your revenue or sales. Uh, and let's say this is 100. You take out from this the cost of the goods sold. Let's make it 50. And then you have uh, employee, employee welfare expenses 
let's say 10 and you can have uh, you have depreciation uh, so let's say 5 and there can be all the other expenses as well let's say this is also 5 after you take all of these out you have to pay finance cost finance cost let's say in this case is also 5 what is the money which is available to pay this finance cost the interest amount of 5 that is the question and the answer is uh, this is the inflow you get this much money and then you have to first pay off the cost of the goods sold you have to pay the employee welfare expenses depreciation and other expenses when all the expenses have been paid you come you reach at a number uh, which which uh, and in that in this case the number is going to be 30 this is the earning of the business earning of the business before paying the interest before paying the interest this is the money which is available to pay off the interest you have to pay 5 as the interest but you have 30 rupees to pay it so uh, after you pay this money you are left with 25 this is called earnings earnings before tax because on this amount now you pay a tax let's say 5 and then you reach at a number called profit after tax pat it's a popular uh, acronym which is used to refer to the profit earned during the year profit after tax or also called the bottom line uh, of the uh, business so uh, what we wanted to take out from this is here this term earnings before interest and actually not only interest this is earning before interest and tax because tax has also uh, needs also to be paid before interest and tax i'm adding these two words to it and this is a standard term which is called ebit earning before interest and tax there you go so you're already familiar with the statement uh, the format of the income statement what i've done is i've taken an example to show you uh, the uh, calculation for EBIT. How do we get this number called EBIT? How are we going to use this number now? Well, we put this in the numerator EBIT. So we had 30 rupees to pay 5 rupees of interest, which means you had 6 times your earnings were 6 times uh, that of the uh, interest, the finance cost. Therefore, it means even if your earnings fall down by one sixth, you will still be able to uh, pay off your, uh, you know, interest expenses. Not one sixth, you know, five sixth. If your earnings fall by uh, uh, five by six times, you will still be able to pay off the finance cost. This means the bank, you know, can rest assured the bank would know that you have capacity to pay the interest. You are doing good business. Uh, so that's where this uh, ratio comes in and that's how it helps in decision making of the business uh, and of the parties that are trying to lend to the business. So we have uh, discussed three ratios uh, to judge the long term financial position of the company. We first spoke about uh, the external liabilities divided by internal liabilities which was debt to equity ratio. And then we looked at proprietary ratio. And finally, we discussed the interest coverage ratio. So these three ratios help us judge the long term financial position of the business, the solvency position of the business. I'll see you in the next video where we will do a tutorial to understand these three uh, indicators in more detail.